Welcome back to your home garage and in this video I'm going to review the difference between nitrogen and compressed air filled tires. And through my research I can tell you I changed my mind on what is best for me. First off, regardless of what's in your tire, the benefits of proper tire pressure are numerous. Keeping the correct air pressure in your tires helps them last longer, helps your car handle better, and could even help maximize your fuel economy. Under or overinflated tires are more difficult to handle and increase your risk of tire blowout. Nitrogen has become a popular choice for many drivers. The most notable advantage of nitrogen filled tires deals with tire pressure, which is crucial to keeping your tires in good shape. Now there's nothing wrong with keeping your tires inflated with air. After all, drivers have been using compressed air successfully for years. Compressed air is easy to find and often free. So by understanding the differences between the two, you can then make an informed decision. Nitrogen does not leak out of tires as quickly as compressed air because their molecules are bigger, which make them harder to permeate the tire. Therefore, it maintains proper tire pressure for a longer period of time. Keep in mind, tires naturally lose small amounts of air over time, whether they're filled with compressed air or nitrogen, so it's definitely not a one and done fill. Tires filled with nitrogen also maintain inflation pressure longer than compressed air filled tires during fluctuations in temperature. Nitrogen performs better because it's dry compared to compressed air which contains moisture, but more to come on this topic when we dig into the numbers. Both of these are not considered maintenance free. Tires filled with nitrogen still require pressure checks to identify slow leaks. It's also a good practice to visually inspect tires for cuts, tears, bulges, and tread wear, or other signs of impending tire trouble. You may have also heard that since nitrogen is dry, it reduces the potential for chemical deterioration of the tire liner and limits the possibility of rust and corrosion on the wheel. Of course, we're referring to steel wheels. Now, compressed air systems at most tire shops have moisture separators that limit the amount of water vapor in the compressed air supply. And under proper maintenance, those compressors are also drained. So in relation to the number of vehicles on the road and the total number of tires sold annually, the occurrence of tire and wheel damage caused by moisture is not widespread. Plus keep in mind that your tires and wheels are exposed to the elements outside, so it's already experiencing rain, snow, salt, and a lot of other minerals, gases, and elements. Now depending on where you go, it could cost more and take longer for your tires to be inflated with nitrogen, especially the first time. When it comes to convenience and cost, compressed air provides more convenience. Now what about mixing? Say you have nitrogen filled tires but you need to top up and nitrogen just isn't available. Using compressed air to top up your nitrogen filled tires will not harm your tires, but it will dilute the purity of the nitrogen and lessen its effectiveness. Now let's dig into some specifics and see if nitrogen is the way to go. So I'm a huge fan of racing and especially F1. A lot of the technology that we have in today's cars evolved from the racing world, but that doesn't mean that the technology is applied in the same way. We know nitrogen molecules are larger and slower moving than those of compressed air. Because of this, nitrogen won't seep out of the tires as quickly as air will, helping to maintain proper pressure for a longer period of time. But air composition is already 79% nitrogen, 20% oxygen, and then you have argon and carbon dioxide. So essentially, aren't we already filling our tires with nitrogen when using compressed air? Where the difference lies is not in the 79%, but in the remaining 21% that contains moisture. And moisture in your tire is what causes the issue. The moisture content is unpredictable when it comes to filling your tire at a station, unless they have an air system with a moisture separator that limits the amount of water vapor in it. The air compressor is also going to have an excess amount of moisture in it. Therefore, moisture transfer is totally unavoidable. The issue with moisture in your tire is that when it heats up and expands, it's the wild card of that expansion which affects the performance of your tire. An air filled tire, once heated, will expand far more quickly, but at an unpredictable rate which affects the performance because you don't know where the tire pressure will land. Nitrogen filled tires are far more predictable because it's dry but it will still expand at a rate of 2% for every 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, let's get a bit technical and talk about the filling process of nitrogen. Keep in mind we already know that regular air contains 79% nitrogen. Unfortunately, the process from your local garage to a track car just isn't the same, mainly because the tire isn't heated up to remove all the moisture. In Formula 1, the process is as follows. 
The tires have one valve going in and another one going out. Then the nitrogen is cycled through the tire for a couple of hours. In addition, the tires have heated blankets that go up to 100 degrees Celsius, and the ramps are heated to 110 degrees Celsius. This is the way race cars get all the moisture out of the tires in order to make it pure nitrogen. Now that is a lot of work, so do you think your tires are going through something similar when filled with nitrogen? Now let's review what the typical service station process is. And keep in mind, most providers inflating tires with nitrogen will state that they will never reach 100% purity and will likely advise that reaching at least 93 to 95% purity is necessary to receive the desired benefits. This ratio is normally achieved by initially purging the tires of existing air down to a few PSI and then filling it with nitrogen. The purge and fill cycle is often repeated to achieve the desired level of nitrogen. So not quite the same process as a track car. Let's also consider something else. When they drain your tire of the air prior to filling it with nitrogen, it's going to have approximately 15 PSI due to atmospheric pressure. Okay, so what is atmospheric pressure? One atmospheric pressure corresponds to the pressure exerted by a vertical column of mercury, as in a barometer. One standard atmosphere, which is also referred to as one atmosphere, is equivalent to 101,000 pascals or newtons of force per square meter, all the way down to 14.7 pounds per square inch, or 15 PSI for easy rounding. So what that means is, if you want 31 PSI in your tire, it converts to 45.7 PSI A. Are you confused yet, or even wondering what this has to do with your tire? At sea level, standard atmospheric pressure is 14.7 PSI, compared with a vacuum. When we measure pressure with respect to a vacuum, we call that absolute pressure, and we sometimes tack on an A onto the PSI to make it explicit that we mean absolute pressure. So atmospheric pressure at sea level is 14.7 PSI A. Many pressure gauges measure the pressure with respect to the surrounding air. When you measure the pressure in your tires, the gauge measures the pressure difference between inside and outside tire air. So if that gauge were reading 31 PSI, you would be more accurate and precise by saying the pressure in the tire is 31 PSI G. The G on the end emphasizes that this is gauge pressure. The pressure difference is really what's important to tire inflation. But if you need to talk about the absolute pressure inside the tire, then you would add the atmospheric pressure of 14.7 PSI and calculate the absolute pressure in the tire, which would be 45.7 PSI A. This basically means that there is 15 PSI of atmospheric pressure pushing against the tire, hence the 45 PSI in the tire to balance it back down to 31 PSI. So when your tire is drained, there's still going to be one atmospheric pressure or approximately 15 PSI left inside that tire. For this reason, I've switched my way of thinking and sticking with air versus nitrogen because I'm not getting the same type of performance. In reality, it's more of a placebo effect for the everyday driver. And that's why racing cars cycle through their system for hours to get the remaining 21% of gases out of the system to achieve maximum nitrogen. Let me give you another perspective. Oxygen permeates approximately three to four times faster than nitrogen through a typical rubber tire primarily because oxygen molecules are slightly smaller than nitrogen. And since 79% of air is already nitrogen, we're really only discussing the remaining 21% that is diffusing it three to four times faster than pure nitrogen. So here's how the theoretical numbers look on paper. Pure nitrogen diffuses one PSI drop in 36 days. Compressed air diffuses one PSI drop in 30 days. In fact, I called a tire shop to see how much it would cost to fill my tires with nitrogen so I could add some sort of cost in this video, and they talked me out of it, which I greatly appreciated the honesty. So in the nitrogen to air debate, there isn't necessarily a right or a wrong answer. Whether you choose to fill your tires with nitrogen or compressed air, the most important aspect of tire maintenance is maintaining proper tire pressure. Tires that are properly inflated tend to wear more evenly, handle better, improve the fuel economy of your vehicle, and just last much longer. So make sure you help to keep this channel going by hitting that like button, sharing this video with a friend. Also, please comment below as I reply to all. Plus, don't forget to subscribe. And we'll see you next time on Your Home Garage.